Ton Tonight is the first band that comes out from the Nexus Globetrotters. That is Sergeant Hammer. Nobody wants to play with Hammer. Poor Hammer has to be alone and play that Snoopy song. Nope, doesn't get to play. The band coming out from Cats is another common band we saw last week, but not so much this week. That is the Lost Vikings. Cats doesn't want to play with Lost Vikings. Um, we saw its band before... I can't remember which map. I kept predicting it would be on Sky Temple. I can't remember if it was or not. But Cats doesn't want to play with Lost Vikings. They don't want that experience soak or that ability to be everywhere at one time. But the Nexus Globetrotters pull out their, uh, I guess we could say their trademark first pick, ETC. Yeah, they sure do like the ETC pick, for sure. Mm -hmm. And Cats have responded with the Vala Uther. So more of what we've seen mm -hmm. as well. Yep, no surprises there, and that means we can go right on to the next picks from Nexus Globetrotters. That is Rhaegar, no surprise there. But Jaina we're going to see again, which is always fun. A little bit different than the typical maybe uh, damage dealers that we normally see. Usually we see a Tychus and Illidan, stuff like that. So maybe we're going to see another uh, recurrence of the support, the Squishy, with an Illidan and uh, another support. I don't know. We'll see. But Katz is up to pick next. No prediction from me on what they're going to do. They have things wide open picking such solid heroes like Uther and Vala. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. What would you like to see, Gilly? We I'm haven't betting, seen any, I'm any betting, thrall. I'm betting to grab the Tassadar, which is exactly what happened. <laughs> uh, Call it. Called it. The Tassadar. And here I'm mm, maybe going to pick up their um, tank. Maybe a Stitches. We'll have to see. I, I don't know. Nope, they're going to go ahead and pick up the Tychus to secure their damage dealers, which uh, is also a very good move. And we know Nexus Globetrotters have a very solid Jaina player. We've seen it before. So uh, we'll have to see what they're going to pick to go ahead and round out uh, round out their composition. Any Any suggestions? Any thoughts? Any guesses? Well, I just think it's really smart of cats to not pick their tank right now because they know that Nexus Globetrotters has their tank already. So it's not like they're probably going to defensively pick another one unless they're willing to go that dual so the dual tank build, which we saw maybe isn't quite as strong right now. So smart move on the part of cats. We see Nexus Globetrotters having one tank, one support, and uh, one damage dealer. I think we'll probably see another support and another damage dealer. In terms of who that support will be, Maybe a Malfurion would be nice to see. There would be a lot of healing potential, a lot of protection potential. Um, I would love to see a Malfurion Illidan come That's out. That's what I was hoping too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great minds, Gillyweed. Great minds. We've seen and them then I do Rhaegar and Jaina and Illidan before, so I don't think it's too, um, I don't know, mm -mm. too out of the park stretch. just to do that. Yeah. But I wonder why they're waiting so long to do it. There must be something else that they have in mind, which who can know the mind of the Globetrotters? They're but then we'll see cats pull out a tank for sure, which mm -hmm. will probably, like you said, be Stitches. So maybe they're wondering if they need to deal with that in a certain way or not. Stitches or Diablo. We've seen quite a bit of Diablo tonight That's true. as well. Actually, oh! actually... <laughs> So now I almost wonder if that was sort of a pick to keep cats from having either of the sort of displacement tanks, the really tanky ones being ETC and Diablo. Now, of course, it just has the hook with displacement, but that relies on you landing the hook. So right. I'm wondering if this was the the time that they were thinking was like, what can we do? Could could the dia could we do the double tank? Would we have enough damage? And would it be good enough that uh, we can sort of mess them up a little bit by taking Diablo? And they go ahead and pick up Nazebo too. So as long as they can uh, keep Nazebo and Jaina alive, which they have the capabilities of doing in at least keeping people off of them by throwing mm -hmm. people around with ETC and Diablo. They might be able to make this work. And we have seen how well Diablo can protect the rest of his team simply mm -hmm. by being out in front and not dying. So maybe he can account for the fact that they don't have a second support going on here. Even though we've seen the, the dual tank build not be effective in our previous game, maybe we'll see it be effective here. We'll have to see. I'm very interested in seeing how the Nexus Globetrotters make the dual tank uh, dual tank build work. Of course, one more tank we'll have to see on the field because cats will 
most likely grab one, but I think, yep, there it is. They'll probably, they're gonna grab stitches, and we are all set to go into this first game of the best of three of the finals. We're here. We made it, Gilly. We yeah, did. Yeah, interesting, because looking at Nexus Globetrotters, it's such an interesting mix of you can't kill this person, and this person is super squishy. It's like one or the other. There's no one in between. Right. Um, whereas there's a lot more balance on cats. So, ooh, this will be fun to watch. And Dragonshire, nonetheless, a very small map, very easy to move around. So, you know, maybe that's a little bit of a help for Stitches as he is one of the big, fat, slower heroes. <laughs> you know, Anna, just once, I wouldn't mind seeing a Sergeant Hammer. I don't know that we're going to see it. <laughs> nope, <laughs> I don't think so. Our hopes are dashed. I love watching Sergeant Hammer too. Yeah, she is a uh, she's fun. I don't think that we would see her for sure on the Dragon Shire because she is so strong. Um, but you know, I I miss that that tanky, lovable, plucky <laughs> tank driver. Sergeant it is Hammer. so interesting because from week to week it changes so much what these people are what these teams are doing. Because uh, a couple weeks ago we saw almost every game Sergeant Hammer, especially mm. alongside Zagara. We've seen no Zagara whatsoever, not pick, not banned, nothing from Zagara this time, and 100% uh, ban on Hammer. And it has only been a couple weeks, so things change very, very quickly. That is for, that's for sure. And we're seeing it, I mean, you know, there's all the bans that on Sergeant Hammer, so that's sort of been the... Um, the response, right, to everyone picking her is now everyone's just, somebody is banning her. So we had a slight uh, bio break from <laughs> one of our cats players, but I think they're back. I'm, I'm being warned, warned about something here in the, in the <laughs> chat. Sorry about that, but here we go. We're starting. It's the finals. It's game one versus Cats Gaming and Nexus Globetrotters. And we're on the Dragonshire. The Dragonshire, in case you don't know yet, involves two shrines, one at the top, one at the bottom. You channel them and control them. If your team controls both, you have the opportunity to take the Dragon Knight, who gives one of your players all sorts of tankiness, lots of damage, and new abilities with which they can exceptionally well push down buildings. That's something that you don't want to let your opponents have especially if you can't have it. So you're going to want to fight over that. And a lot of times we've seen with teams at this skill level where they know what to expect from each other, that that first dragon will take a while to happen. That it will. The longer it takes, I think the crazier the game gets. We'll have to see. <laughs> but introducing our teams, we've got Nexus Globetrotters on the blue side. Bella Morte, oh, normally we're seeing play Illidan. He's on the uh, the Diablo this time. We've got Kiefer's on ETC, Five, Anxiety, Law, four, playing... Three, two, Who is that? One, Who, who's he on? Jaina. Even... Is that Jaina? Oh, it is! It's yep. a crazy Jaina skin that I have not seen yet. Teebs is on the Rhaegar, and Cossacks is on the Nazebo. And of course, wearing red this time are the Cats. Cats Gaming. Kill you, Zion playing Stitches, Jordo on Vala, Vu playing Tascar, Blythok on Tychus, and Jimmy on Uther. Jimmy. You Jimmy. sound like you sound like Tychus. Jimmy. Ooh, very aggressive fight happening in mid. Not sure too much is gonna happen. Keepers is gonna run back in and try to get a couple of guitar shots. Uh slaps. <laughs> something on Kill You Zion, but not gonna be too much. They were trying to catch somebody out, but Jaina doing a great job. That Jaina skin is the new Jaina skin, I do believe, and that is pretty. Yeah, uh, interesting that uh, <laughs> sorry, that the cats, um, the cats all went five middle. I thought maybe they would miss out on some experience, but they didn't. They managed to throw somebody back into that top lane to soak just in time. Uh, Diablo was up there the whole time and was soaking experience, so they managed to actually somehow cats come out ahead in experience. So in this early game, it's not much. Shrines are activated though, so now we're gonna see some action around the top and the bottom. Looks like cats are immediately grabbing the bottom shrine and then going after Rhaegar with the hook who might die to, oh, does not die to Tychus, but comes very, very close and heals up. And the top shrine is also controlled by cats, so they are able to take the Dragon Knight in the middle, but I don't think Vala can do that with ETC puppy guarding it that way. 
Man, Rhaegar is going to be so happy right now that he can mount up instantly because that Ghost Wolf form saved his life. That, of course, being Rhaegar's trait. I did want to say really fast, while I possibly can, that there's an interesting... Um, something that we don't normally see from Stitches talent-wise. Chew your food. This is the Stitches build I kind of like with amplified healing next to it as well. So I'm pretty pumped to see that and see uh, Very cool. see if maybe my, uh, my Stitches builds, well, my, the one that I like to use can be uh, used to get some damage done. Interesting too, because Stitch is focusing on healing um, when they both have, they have two supports and the other team doesn't, means that they really are intent on not dying. They really want to be very healthy in this game. Well, if he, if Stitches can focus on being tankier than all of the heals, because you know Stitches is normally not one of the tankiest tanks, and ETC and Diablo, who are on the other team, are definitely that. that. So if he can keep um, from needing to get heals put on him, that puts all of the heals directly on Vala, Tychus, and then a little bit to uh, to Tassadar as well. Because um, they really only have that one healer. Tassadar has healing sh uh, ward and shields, but not too much other than that. Yeah, totally. And again, the cats are still controlling that dragon, sh both the dragon shrines. Um, but not able to quite make it to get the dragon in the middle. But that may not be their intent. They're just, again, playing keep away as much as they are trying to get the dragon. Um, the top shrine will go to the Gl Nexus Globetrotters, thanks to Diablo's work up there. But Tassadar, Vu, is up there trying to make sure he doesn't go too far with his newfound power. Fight down on bottom. Anxiety got Law got really low, but is barely getting away, but not Cossix, who is right behind. Rhaegar is not able to drop the heals on both of them. And uh, so Nazebo is going to drop, and Cossix is definitely going to have to go back. Both of them being very squishy and very low on health. Well, you know, one of them being so low, they're, they're dead. <laughs> being, uh, being so low you're dead is not a good place to be. <laughs> Definitely want to be a little healthier than that. We are seeing both teams soaking experience pretty evenly, both at level 7 right now. No team taking a very clear lead, although it looks like the Cats will take uh, level 8 a little bit sooner. Could be anybody's game at this point, though. Nobody's got a dragon. Although we are seeing dominance over the shrines from cats. You know, we saw this with the Nexus Globe Trotters last time they were on Dragon Shine, though. They're not too concerned with taking those shrines right, right away. They really have faith in Keith Keepers being able to keep them off of the Dragon Shrine. Um, so we'll have to see if they uh, if that's able to work out for them in a, for a second game in a row. It looks like they may be willing to fight. Oh, the hook bringing Cossacks in, and he melts immediately. Katz is really happy that they got the first uh, kill there in that fight against Nexus Globetrotters, and they will take the advantage to go ahead and grab those Siege Giants in the meantime while uh, while the Nexus Globetrotters mourn their loss. What a hook. That's, you know, all I have to say about that. Teeb's getting very low. Uh, going to have to back off. They were thinking about trying to take that shrine, but they weren't able to, which means that Keepers will have to continue to play Keep Away with the Dragon Knight. Uh, but now there are three heroes for Cats Gaming up here. They're about to get 10. There's no way the Keepers can put up with that. And there is the Dragon Knight right as Cats Gaming's about to hit level 10. That will be a great place for them to be. Level 10 means that they are not afraid to engage in a team fight. They can push with reckless abandon. Um, and it looks like in both the top and bottom lanes, they've left someone to deal with the uh, players there as well. Oh, see those that six zombies dropped from Cossacks and is enabling them. They were able to pick up the, uh, the Stitches kill. So the Dragonite has gone up. An early Dragonite, you're probably not going to get a fort. So uh, the better idea is try to get as many towers as you can. They notice they took down the wall in mid, then they moved up, and they took down the wall on top. That's just solidifying that experience lead. Now, Blythewalk getting very low, and the Dragonite is going to have to disengage so that he is safely away by the time that he is no longer the Dragonite so that he doesn't get caught out. Very tempting to try and group up and make a big team fight push in the middle, but like you said, really great play from them, making sure that they grab all of the... Uh, the lanes, just the that wall and the towers, making sure that they have a clear path to push later and an experienced lead to do lots of things with now. The uh, Cats Gaming still has the uh, lead when it comes to experience. They, uh, it's not too much right now. They're in the same. 
ETC is just telling me a novel right now. Is he doing that to you too? No. He's talking for forever. Can't even concentrate. <laughs> uh, oh, Kill You Zion getting a great pull on Anxiety Law. Immediately followed up by the Divine Storm from Uther means that Jaina melts and is gone. That's another Jaina kill. Unfortunately, Jaina is not having the same amount of luck with positioning when it comes to getting constantly pulled by stupid Sturges' hooks. <laughs> We've seen mostly Kill You Zion play Diablo, if I'm not mistaken. It could be that when we saw the Nexus Globetrotters grab uh, Diablo, it could also be a nod to his Diablo play. I'm mm -hmm. surprised to see him performing so well on Stitches, landing all of these hooks when we haven't seen him play so much Stitches tonight. Maybe a secret weapon that we didn't know about. That could be. And that secret weapon is definitely coming in handy. They're now level 13, which means the Cats Gaming are a whole other talent le uh, level ahead of Nexus Globetrotters, and that's just going to push them further ahead as we get ready for the next Dragonite phase. They did manage to uh, initially grab those Siege Giants that were on the blue side of the map, Cats Gaming taking Nexus Globetrotters of the way. However, they did just respawn, and we may see the map splitting more evenly, although it looks like, nope, they're lined up to steal them again. They would really like to have those giants for their own, and it looks like with all five of them there and only Diablo here to contest, they probably will be able to do that. So aggressive, and they know that they've got to get 13 before they can try to do any sort of team fight. Um, just be very perilous to try to get into a full on five on five team fight when you don't have the same amount of talents. But now they've got him. Keepers is going to try to go in and get something done. Bellamorte throws back the stitches to his body blocked between Keepers and Bellamorte, but Keepers is so low. Cossix has dropped the Ravenous, but he has he's stopped and has to move back. He's taking so much damage. Teams ancestral heals Bellamorte, but he takes so much damage. All the stuns from Uther means it's very difficult to escape. And, uh, I also loved seeing that bile in there. Uh, yeah. Stitches really contributing to the fight and kind of uh, surprising their opponents with that bile that was poisoning everyone around him. You know what's really funny is Diablo picked up Stitches and threw him back into his team, but that was the perfect place for Stitches to be with that bile. He just says like, okay, well, in that case, I'll hit R. And all of a sudden, they were all crowded around Stitches trying to kill him, but taking bile damage at the same time. And there is a Dragon Knight for Cats Gaming once again. Yep, and this dragon doesn't have to bother with piddly little walls. He is able just to run right in and grab that fort if he wants. Although, probably wants to wait for some support from his team, which he has now kind of uh, delaying, probably waiting for a really good position, wanting to make sure that nothing is wasted. Mm -hmm. Although, yeah. I would have pushed in a little bit sooner than this. <laughs> Well, he was really waiting for that minion support. When a fort attacks you, your attacks are slowed. So if you could get the fort to attack something else, preferably minions and not one of your uh, teammates, then you can attack with the full force of your attacks and you're not having to attack so slowly. It looks like they're going to go join this minion push up top instead of waiting here mid, trying to kind of outrun their opponents a little bit. Looks like they will do lots of damage very quickly and will probably bring this down before their opponents, the Nexus Globetrotters, have a chance to respond. The Nexus Globetrotter is going to make a smart decision hanging back behind this wall, not going to run up and engage uh, over the bridge. We've seen how bridges can happen, and uh, they don't want to be part of that. Bridges are no fun in the game of Heroes of the Storm. And uh-oh, Bellamorte's got to run. He's got the full force of Cats Gaming coming after him, but he was mounted up and ready. He got away, no problem. Um, we do have, again, a talent lead for Cats Gaming, so they're just continuing to keep that experience lead, uh, which is really turning out well for them. Yeah, they're going to drop back and also take their bruisers, so always having a really good vision of what's going on on the map. Good decision from Nexus Globetrotters to make sure they take theirs as well so that can't get stolen. Um, both teams kind of retreating to their side of the map, and the Siege Giants will respawn for Nexus Globetrotters in six seconds, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them running down and grabbing that. Although it looks like yet again the cats are going to come and try to steal it themselves. These guys! So s greedy. Thievery. Th thievish. Well, you know, take every advantage you can. Kill you, Zion, not grabbing that hook. <laughs> If he had, though, Rhaegar would have been in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but instead, is happy to grab the Siege Giants and leave. Looks like they're going to go for those bottom bruisers. They really want to paint this map red. 
I want to show you guys how, the amazing positioning that we're seeing. If you notice that Uther is right up next to Kyoyu Zion, that's so if he ever does get that hook, uh, Jimmy is there right, um, right beside him, ready to instantly stun the person who's hooked. It's not enough, especially where you've got Sprint on Nazebo and Jaina to hook them. The stun is really what does the trick and enables your hero, uh, your teammates to be able to take off, take out that person. Really using the Giants as this front line, the Cats are making sure that they have a huge push to push up behind and against the Bruisers now joining the fray. There are four Giants and Bruisers and five players. This is not a good situation for the Nexus Globetrotters. They are forced to defend. And at this point, Cats could really take any advantage they wanted if they wanted to send one player to do something else. Koyu Zion is in, he's dropping the vial everywhere. ETC is instantly taken out before he can be ancestral healed. So already one of the tanks down, now Jaina's down, Cossacks gets pulled in, immediately taken out. D Diablo is being stunned, Uther's so far up but he just Divine Storms runs away. Jordo drops the uh, Reign of Vengeance but it's not quite enough, poor Rhaegar just wants to ancestral heal something. <laughs> it's probably just going to be yourself buddy, I'm so sorry, <laughs> everyone else is dead. And this is going to be a very quick win for Cats Gaming, who still has 20 seconds to take out this core. I do believe that they're going to be able to do so. I think you're probably right. What a game. Very impressive. To what do you attribute this quick win? Do you think that relentless aggression really was what did it? Yeah, I think that... Uh you know, I saw just now the level 16 double impro imposing presence, I think, that coming out from ETC and Diablo, I think they were really hoping for sort of that later game, um, having really strong tanks that were able to bully people around, hopefully, but, you know, I, I think really they just were hoping that they could keep Nazebo and Jaina alive. They'd done it before with Jaina and Illidan, but it just wasn't quite to the same effect. Maybe they weren't, um, maybe you're right. Maybe they were trying to steal Diablo from Kill You Zion, hoping that he wasn't quite as good at stitches, but he had some, landed some impeccable hooks, and uh, those hooks can make all the difference in this game. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, having Uther right up next to Stitches that whole time, they were very conscious with positioning, mm -hmm. didn't step out of their comfort zone at all, but were very aggressive. They took risks, but only as a team, not by one, one by one, and their positioning was so tight-knit that Nexus Globetrotters really had a tough time responding to it, especially with their composition, not having the healing power that Cats did. We saw Rhaegar, like you said, just trying to heal somebody, <laughs> but everyone was dead. So uh, yeah. in this next match, We'll have to see whether the drafts look a little bit different in response, and I'm looking forward to it. Yep, I definitely think we probably won't see a double tank, but we'll have to see for sure. Guys, we will be right back with Game 2 of the Heroes Hype Amateur Series Finals coming away in just a second.